Hello and welcome to the third video in this Minor Glitches tutorial series. This one is going to cover the Fake Flippers glitch, as well as another related glitch, the Walking on Water glitch. To execute Fake Flippers, we're not really tricking the game into thinking that we have flippers when we don't. We're actually going to bypass the game's check to see if we have flippers entirely. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to show two different approaches. Um, but just to show what it looks like first, as you can see, uh, I don't have the flippers now. The game's kicking me right back out. And yet somehow, just a little bit of a different uh, approach here, I can swim. So the first, uh, the first technique I'll show does involve using a screen transition. What you want to do is, uh, when you jump into the water, the game lets you move for just a single frame before it kicks you back out. And this has something to do with the animation, the splashing animation, and how Link's state changes. There's just a little bit of a desynchronization that allows you to move for a single frame. Uh, and after you use a screen transition, the game doesn't check if you have flippers. There's just no reason for it to. It just has to assume that you already do. So, if we're one or two pixels away from a screen transition, you jump into the water and immediately hold the direction towards the transition, you'll activate it and swim, and then you can continue swimming from there. So, to set up the screen transition approach to fake flippers, you can just try to manually place yourself on one of the nearest pixels to the edge of the screen, but it's really hard because it's only a two pixel window. You might find yourself, you know, having to make constant readjustments uh, until you can finally get it to work. So there, there are a few setups that you can use that make it a lot easier. And one of the most common that you'll see is uh, on this screen right here, it uses this bush. Uh, this is used in a normal speed run. It's it's pretty common and pretty easy, but there are actually easier ways in other places. But since this one's the most common, I'll show it first. The approach here, the first thing you want to do is line yourself up with this wall. That's how you want to be aligned on the Y axis. And then you'll walk all the way east to this bush. Uh, the next part, you're going to want to slash your sword and then hold up and right while the sword is slashing. And the reason why that's important is because the Lateral directional inputs on a Super Nintendo controller are separate inputs. There's not a single, uh, there's not a single input for a diagonal, so it's really hard to hit both on the same frame and not accidentally hit one a frame or a couple frames early. So to be sure that your movement is strictly diagonal, you'll perform an action that stops Link's movement, and while that action is taking place, you can sort of buffer any other inputs that you want to take place afterwards. So while the slash is going on, you hold up and right. Keep your sword out and hold diagonal all the way to the wall. And then as soon as you jump, change your input from diagonal to purely east. And that should work. It should be easy every time, except when it's not. It's possible if you're on the, the closest pixel to the edge of the screen transition and you're holding diagonal to jump, it's possible you'll get kind of a funny jump that looks something like that. Um, if that happens, just hold north to jump, and that'll always work. And then again, hold east uh, before you touch the before you touch the water. Start holding east, and you'll get to the transition. That's just a weird, quirky thing that can happen sometimes. It's pretty uncommon, but if it does happen and you find yourself kind of stuck in that funny jump, just release the D-pad and hold north only, uh, and you should jump just fine. So that was probably the most common setup that you'll see, but th there are easier ways. If you happen to have the dash boots, you can bonk against objects that will knock you all the way to the edge of the screen, and then just jump in and swim. It's a pretty easy approach. Also, if you have a bomb, you can damage boost yourself to the edge of the screen, and do the same thing. If you don't have any bombs, or if uh, there's a weak enemy around, it's possible that you can sometimes coerce an enemy into damaging you, and not have to... Uh, I'd have to use a bomb at all. I'm off my way to the screen transition, then you can walk up to the water and jump right in. This option is available in a lot of places, the bonking option. I wanted to show this one specifically because there is one strange quirk about this one that I've not noticed anywhere else. For this one specifically, if you hold left towards the screen transition, it won't work. But if you hold up left diagonal, it will work. So if you happen to find yourself in a place where you're sure that you're close enough to the screen transition but the normal inputs don't work, just try uh, little variations like that and sometimes you'll be able to make it work. 
So the screen transition technique to activate fake flippers, it's pretty simple. The other one that I want to cover is called fairy flippers. In this case, you need to have a fairy in a bottle that will revive you if you die. And you're going to need to die and have the fairy revive you while you're jumping into water. Now this only works if you're jumping into water off of one of these little diving boards or uh, from shallow water to deep water, not from a ledge. Because if you jump from a ledge, you just won't be able to get the bomb to hit you at all. Uh, so we're going to start down here, and this might sound more difficult than it actually is, because it probably sounds like it's frame perfect or very precise like that. But I'll show you the setup that I use, and you'll find it's quite easy. So the first thing I'll do is I'll jump into the water just to make sure I'm as low as I can be on this diving board when, it, uh, when the game sends me back onto it. I'll face sideways so I can place the bomb next to me, and then as soon as the bomb color changes, I'll jump. It's a pretty wide timing window. And uh, as long as you're over top of the water when you die, when the fairy revives you, you should be swimming. Nice and easy. All right, now that I've explained how to actually activate this glitch, I'll go into some detail about some of the differences and considerations that you need to take while swimming with the fake flippers gl glitch activated. You probably saw this earlier and noticed it, but I'll actually talk about it now. If you swim across shallow water in fake flippers, you just swim straight across it. You don't jump out and walk across it like you normally would uh, if you do have the real flippers. So that, that is an important thing to know because it just affects how you route your swimming and it may take you by surprise the first time. The other big consideration, and, and this is mistakenly thought of as an automatic soft lock, is if you take damage from an enemy while in uh, fake flippers, uh, it'll actually treat treat you as if you've jumped into the water without the flippers and try to put you back on land wherever you jumped in, which is the normal mechanic. Uh, and, and I think the reason why that happens is part of the animation when you take damage uses uh, the subroutine or the function uh, that, that you would normally use when you jump into water, and part of that involves a flippers check. So it's just a coincidence that it ends up checking for the flippers when you take damage. So here you saw I was re returned back to the location that I started on Nothing strange happened there. Uh, however, that's only because I took damage on the same screen that I originally jumped into the water. Um, if, however, you do the fake flippers, you transition the screen, now I'm on a different screen than I originally jumped in, and this guy's gonna hurt me. And he'll try to send me back to the original position where I, uh, where I jumped in. Obviously, this is not correct, however. Um, it's, I'm on the right side of the screen where, uh, where the game thinks I originally jumped in. Um, so because I, I started on the right side of the screen right next to a transition, the game right now thinks that there's a fake, well it thinks there's a real screen transition next to me but there isn't really. So if I move at all to the right it's going to try to activate that screen transition but it is not going to work correctly. This is this will be a hard lock if you do that. It's called the infinite scroll glitch. So if you do take damage while doing fake flippers and you get sent back to an incorrect position like this, I recommend immediately saving and quitting so you don't lose any any of your progress. However, I will show what this looks like. I'm gonna move a little bit. I I press the left button. It, the game pushed me to the right into the transition and it activates this uh, this infinite scrolling glitch. This is something that you don't want to happen. But it's easily avoidable. Even if you do take damage, you simply save and quit, and you should be fine. There's a couple of different ways to activate the walking on water glitch. The first of which involves a normal fake flippers setup, uh, which means that this will actually only work if you don't have flippers. So we're going to swim into this whirlpool here with fake flippers. And then we're going to try to get into this wishing well here. All right. Now the first thing you'll ob obviously notice is that I'm swimming on land here. And logically, if I'm swimming on land inside here, then I must be walking on water when I get out. Okay, obviously that's not totally logical, but it is the way it works. There's a really strange condition here, where this will actually only work if you do have the Moon Pearl. You need to not have the flippers and have the Moon Pearl for this to work. And from here you can uh, walk or dash into Zora's Domain and make your way from there. The next setup you can do whether you have the flippers or not. Uh, although whether or not you have the flippers does affect the way that the walk on water glitch functions and I'll explain that in a bit. 
Uh, so this one, what I'll do is I'll cut down these two tufts of grass and the bush over this hole. And then all you have to do is dash near this hole and then jump into water either north or south from a, from a proper ledge. And then you're just walking on water. I know it seems like magic. And it pretty much is just magic. Uh, so what I'll usually do when I do this is uh, I'll dash near this hole and then if you hold your sword out and walk on these stairs you can see you're walking way faster than normal and if that's the case then you know you've successfully activated the glitch and then you can jump in and go from there. Uh, you can use whirlpools just fine and if you don't have flippers you can walk from deep water to shallow water. So some of the concerns here, and some of the, the things you need to be aware of, are if you take damage or if you bonk on a wall while using Walk On Water Glitch, uh, the game will think you jumped in to the water, not where you actually jumped in on the ledge, but from wherever you either took damage or bonked. So if I go over here and dash into this wall here, the game now thinks that I jumped into the water here, and I'm pretty much stuck forever. Of course, I can save and leave or use the flute if I do have it, so it's not like you're you're properly stuck, but you will lose the uh, the activated glitch. All right, so on this save, as you can see, I do have the real flippers, and I wanted to show the walk on water glitch if you do have the flippers. So I'll activate this, make sure it works. All right, so now I mentioned earlier that if you don't have the flippers, you can walk from deep to shallow water and vice versa. However, if you do have the real flippers, when you try to do that, you'll get, you'll you'll deactivate the glitch and you'll sort of jump into the water. Um, if you dash from deep water to shallow water, this actually puts Link in a really peculiar glitch state. You can see his animations are sped up. It looks really funny. And if I touch any object at all, Link will bonk as if he's dashing. Um, that really applies to anything. Even if Link is already recoiling from a bonk, he'll still bonk if he touches an object, which leads to really silly stuff like this. If you do this glitch over water, you will eventually fall out of it, but if you do it somewhere where you're not jumping over top of water, then it is actually an infinite bonk and you can't get out of it anyway except by saving and quitting. Like this. Pretty fun glitch there. Using fake flippers and the walk on water glitch does allow you to do a few shortcuts or even potential sequence breaks in the game depending on what you have available to you. Some of them are kind of obvious. Um, in the normal speedrun we'd actually go from here to this whirlpool in order to get uh, to the mountain and up to the Tower of Hera more quickly. <laughs> also from this location you can get to Zora's Domain. Um, you can use the walk on water glitch or just fake flippers to get up here. But the cool thing about this is it actually lets you bypass the need for the power gloves, which you would normally need to get up here uh, if you don't have flippers. So that's a cool little uh, sequence break there. Using the walk on water glitch just to get across the river here can be a little bit faster than walking down and going around the bridge if you can do it quickly enough. That's a very small shortcut, but a cute one nonetheless. Using the dash approach on, on the edge of a pit to activate fake flippers is actually something that you can do um, on any hole in the game. You can do it on the pyramid, the Ganon hole, you can do it in Skull Woods or Lost Woods. Um, any hole that you can access without having to jump off a ledge like the few in uh, Kakariko Town. Um, it's usually more convoluted and pretty far out of the way, but given very specific circumstances, it can be preferable to actually To actually activate one here in order to get to a few places. So I'm going to try to do this uh, successfully. Alright, there isn't a staircase very nearby that we can use to, to check to see if we successfully activated this glitch uh, as I showed before. This is the nearest one, so we're going to check it here. Looks like it was successful. Now we can dash all the way across the dark world here to the river. Jump in from the north. And there we go. 
<laughs> that bee would hit me, that would have been a big problem. So this can be a way to actually cross this river from west to east. Normally you need the flippers to actually get across here, or some other combination of items to get across the Dark World some other way. If you don't have the hammer, in fact, um, the only other way would be to use the Pyramid Warp, which would involve killing Aghanim. So by doing this, you can actually skip Aghanim's tower in some situations um, by jumping up there. Alternatively, if we don't want to do that, we can actually use this Whirlpool to get to the uh, Dark Lake Hylia here. The Ice Palace River, whatever the heck it's called. Uh, we're going to be very careful not to take damage or to walk on any normal land. And we can make our way all the way up to this island. And we can actually mirror here. So we can actually get to this uh, heart piece without the flippers at all, using only minor glitches. It's a small sequence break. It's pretty far out of the way and it's pretty convoluted, but you know, sometimes it might be worth doing. Well, I think that uh, just about covers it for this tutorial. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time.